Welcome to another fabulous episode of Retrovaniacs. As always, I'm Jeremy Parmentier here with Billy Holiday. Hello. And Jeremy Gregory. Hey, guys. And uh, this week we're going to talk about uh, one of the only games of a handful that feature the king of pop. But before we get to that, Billy, you missed the last episode. What have you been playing over the last month? I did miss the last episode, and I hate that I did because, uh, yeah, that Mega Man game, it's 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 interesting, uh, and it's... It's very intriguing. My hat's off to them. They tried something new. They they put Mega Man in a game and removed the fun from it. <laughs> so uh, it's very brave, very brave. But I have been playing uh, Destiny 2, a lot of it. Uh, I've leveled up in this one much quicker than the last. Uh, I, I think this game is, is, is what the first one said it would be. Uh, it's kind of what I wanted from the first one. So I've really been enjoying that. Uh, and everybody's golf. Jeremy Gregory, once again, has sold me that he gets his cut <laughs> from PSN because he sold me out another one. Uh, everybody's golf I've been playing, like Jeremy said, it's just a nice, relaxing, just simple golf game. Just a, just a real throwback to the, the golf games I enjoy playing. And has finally, uh, I can finally lay Mario Golf down. Well, speaking of throwback, all I've pretty much been playing since the last episode, is uh, what I would consider kind of modern throwback titles. Uh, last time I mentioned I was playing uh, Metroid Samus Returns. Still playing it. Still excellent. Uh, not really grinding on it. I'm, I'm enjoying playing it at a leisurely pace. Um, I also just picked up, right before this podcast, Cuphead. Uh, incredible wow. 2D platformer <laughs> slash shooter. Uh, it's actually more like a Contra than a 2D platformer, uh, but it looks like it's you know an old 1920s, 1930s cartoon. It's just as good as it looks like it should be. I, I can't say enough good things about Cuphead, and I've only played a total of three levels of it so far because uh, I, again, got it this morning. But, man, it is good. I highly recommend Cuphead to anyone who was thinking about buying it. If you if you were ever, you know, when you were little and you kept seeing arcade games and thinking, man, these look like cartoons, uh, other than Dragon's Lair, which literally was a cartoon, this is exactly that. This is a, a, a wonderful arcade shooter style game, but uh, but looks exactly like a cartoon. Highly recommend it. I'm close to just buying it based on that art style alone because, man, that looks good. It's definitely hard, but it's not, at least from what I've played, it's not extremely cheap hard. It's it's things you can see. The, the things that have killed me are things that are obvious will kill me. Um, and, and I could have dodged it or I could have done something better and I did, you know, I just failed to. But it's it's really good. Uh, the other thing I'm, I'm playing, which is not even technically out yet, I normally don't download demos for many things anymore. Um, but I downloaded the demo for Etrian Odyssey 5 for the 3DS. It's actually the full game, but it caps your level at level 10, and it caps your ability to go in the, the dungeon past the third level. But it gives you, I mean, I probably put in 10 hours on a demo. I mean, I've maxed what I can do on it. I, I loved it, but I've played those games before. I knew what to expect. If you haven't played one of those and you're interested, it's like a wizardry-style dungeon fighter. It's extremely brutal, uh, even though it looks like cartoon anime girls. Uh, but it is... It's amazing, and for free to try it and basically get the full experience of, of if you would like it or not, you will know at the end of the demo. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, I did not think I'd like it as much as I do, but I, I mean, I played it nonstop once I downloaded it. Hmm. So, Jeremy, what have you been playing? Um, well, I, I guess since uh, last week, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 was released, and I don't know if any, any of you guys played the original, uh, but it's, uh, it is essentially a callback to, to older... Uh, computer RPGs like Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 and stuff like that. And I was I was a big fan of those games back in the day when, when they came out in the, the late 90s. And I don't think really there's been too many games since that have done that kind of game well. Uh, just that classic computer RPG feel of nothing seems balanced right and <laughs> you can do anything. You can just go up to someone and kill a, a, que a main quest giver and, and your game's done. And the game doesn't even tell you. You know, you can just be stuck there for a good 
uh, and no idea that you were you can't even progress uh, or get into a battle uh, and, and you've gimped your your team, your stats or whatever. No way to progress. You're, you're you know you're screwed. Basically, got to start over or find a way to cheese the game. And so that is what Divinity: Original Sin Two is uh, to an nth degree, uh, for better or worse. It brings all of the best things from the the old computer RPGs. Just you know, great story, great characters, awesome dialogue. Uh, the graphics are really well done. It, it's got a great world to it, but it also brings all of that old school jank with it. Uh, if you're expecting quest markers and and things like that to lead you around, you you will not get that at all. Um, also, you know, there's just so many little things that you can uh, do to completely gimp your character uh, if you don't know what you're doing. So many quests that you can just break just because you said the wrong thing to somebody else. And battles are actually turn-based, like strategy, but uh, they are not... If you play on the classic difficulty, which is the default difficulty, uh, things are generally not in your favor, ever. And you spend a good good few times just trying to find ways to, to cheese that game or the AI so that you can win. And there's a lot of people that like that, and I like that myself, but at some point it's it's kind of getting hard to, to continue with it because I, I'm not a big fan of, of cheesing. I want to go in and have some strategy to it instead of being like, oh, here's a ledge up here. I can stand that you know, it, it, people's going to take uh, like five or six turns to even get to me. And I can just, you know, cheese the other guy on the ground with arrows. That's not really how I like to play. But overall, I think it's a great game. Uh, if you're a fan of those old computer uh, role-playing games like Baldur's Gate, I, you know, you definitely got to get it. It's it's awesome. And if you can deal with the the battle system, or if you don't want to, uh, there's there's an easy mode you can put it down to. But really, that's the only bad thing I can say about it. Well, I like the idea of you can really gimp your characters if you don't know what you're doing. I mean, I, I hate it when it happens, but that's that's one of the things I like about that Etrian Odyssey series as well. It's like if you don't pay attention to how characters and classes interact with each other, you could blow all your skill points and make the most useless party, and it's pretty easy to do so. So I, I do like that uh, that style of, of game mechanic in building a party. Yeah, and it's it still at least gives you uh, pre-made characters that you can use, that the uh, the developers have made and got their own backstory uh, so it, you don't have to worry about completely destroying a custom character at the at the beginning, but you know it definitely does have that aspect to it. And if if you're new to the kind of that style of game going into it, you're probably just going to be like, "What in the world is this? This is just <laughs> how do you do anything in this game? How do you win a battle?" Uh, it, it starts off hard and it stays hard. Well, a game that doesn't start off too hard, but conveniently is the game we're going to talk about today, is Michael Jackson's Moonwalker for the Sega Genesis. This was an old favorite of mine. When I, I had my Genesis, I had three, I had four games actually that I, I played the majority of the time. I, and it would be a while before I picked any others up. I had Tommy Lasorda Baseball, Toe Jam and Earl, Dick Tracy, and I had Moonwalker. And, and Moonwalker was clearly, and, and probably still is, uh, my favorite title on the Sega Genesis. So I was a little nervous coming back to it. I haven't played it in, in many years uh, but I was looking forward to it. I always remember it being a good game. I remember it being one of my kind of one of my go to when there's nothing good to rent. Uh, I would just go go to that one and, and play through it. It didn't take an awful long time, maybe about an hour or so at that point when when I had played it so often. So yeah, this was definitely a, a pick of mine that I I really wanted us to to give a shot to kind of look back and see if it was as good as I recall it being as a child. Now, see, this game is uh, 
not the Moonwalker that I played as a kid. Uh, I played are. the arcade version. Yes. And so I always thought that the Genesis version was just the arcade version. Uh, yeah. Because I didn't have a Genesis. And yeah, they, <laughs> the arcade is one of the, those four player, you know, three yeah. top down types. Uh, uh, very, very similar to, to to almost a gauntlet of sorts uh, with the view and the, the four characters and the traveling around the board. But uh, yeah, this is a, this is, if you were looking for that, uh, you, you were going to definitely be surprised with this one. Well, I had only played this, uh, like I said, last episode, uh, I thought it was at a Toys R Us, but the more I think about it, it was at a children's palace. Doesn't matter, but the oh, children's palace the story matters. Uh, I because I didn't have a Genesis. We had the TurboGrafx 16, but they had them set up to play, and the only game they had on the Genesis for play was Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. And at the time, I was like, "Who wants to play a game about Michael Jackson?" Even then, I was like, "I don't want to play a game about Michael Jackson." But then when you actually played it, the animation was pretty smooth. It was actually kind of fun. The music is good because it is digitized versions of, of Michael Jackson classics. Uh, so I actually was like, that game seems like it could be really fun. And I've never played it again until this podcast. So I was actually very excited because uh, it's one that at least I knew enough that I would you know, want to play it, but not like, yeah, I've never heard of this and it doesn't look very good. And No, I, I was looking forward to playing this, I guess at this point, for almost 30 years. So I'm glad, we've, <laughs> I'm glad we picked it because <laughs> uh, it came out in 1990 for the Genesis, same year as the arcade. Uh, they're both made by Sega, but were different styles of game, as we already kind of talked about. Um, and this game is a more straight... You know, 2D, it's not really a platformer. I don't know what kind of game you would qualify this as. Maybe a platformer. It's definitely uh, a 2D game. I'll put it at that. It's a 2D game. You control Michael Jackson. Uh, your job is to go through uh, different areas where you save children from the evil Mr. Big. Uh, apparently, this is based on the movie Moonwalker, which I've never seen. Did either of you see oh. the movie Moonwalker? I, I had a, a beta and later a VHS copy, a bootleg copy of Moonwalker. I remember my dad sat me down one night and he was like, Moonwalker's on. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> and he's like, it's Michael Jackson. And I was like, who? And so he's like, it's this guy. You know who he is. You've heard Thriller. You know, and I had heard Thriller. And I was like, oh, yeah, that guy. The, the guy with the zombies. I was more interested with the zombies than I was Michael Jackson. And we watched that movie. And, man, that is just a fever dream of a movie. It is. But I will say that this, this game does a pretty damn good job of capturing that film. Yeah. So that film is about... A uh, gangster guy that somehow steals children and Michael uh, Jackson no, saves them? No, not until the very end. Wow. Well, uh, the rest leading up to that is basically just a bunch of, I, I don't even know. It is just a bunch of Michael Jackson's craziest dreams. Yeah. And yeah, then I mean, at the very end, it's like, here's this sort of movie that takes place in like the last 30 minutes. Yeah. You get treated, if you sit through most of it, you get treated to a little bit of plot right there at the end. Well, I may have to hunt this down to see it. The only Michael Jackson movie I've seen is Captain EO, which was, oh, which I saw when I was in Epcot years and years ago. All I remember uh, was that I did not like it. So that, <laughs> I, I didn't imagine this movie could have been very good. But the game, uh, with that as a background, you, you, you go through these areas, you fight off uh, what appear to be gangsters in the first level and then become other things in later levels, uh, some sort of mil militia guys, I, I think, uh, or yeah. robots or... Um, in one level, it's definitely zombies, and I think there are zombies in other levels, but I'm not positive because uh, it's hard to tell in a Genesis exactly uh, what is what in this case because they all kind of look the same. Uh, but you, it's definitely uh, you're Michael Jackson. You you have it's a Genesis controller, a classic Genesis controller. So there's three buttons. You have the ability to move around, obviously with the directional pad. You jump with C. You uh, kick or punch in different directions and throw glitter at people uh, with button B that hurts them. And then button A is kind of this all-purpose Michael Jackson's magic button. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you just tap it in a direction, like he'll throw his hat. If you hold it down longer, he spins around doing damage to things around him. If you hold it down long enough, he'll make everybody around him dance. And just I, like real life. Just I like mean, real that's, that's, life. <laughs> and it does a lot of damage to most of those things. And if they're regular, average guys you're fighting in the level, they probably will die after they do Michael Jackson's dance. Uh, Again, just like real life. At, that yeah. part alone is incredible. The, the Sp first... Speaking of, did, did anyone make the... There, there are dogs. There are attack dogs. Did anybody make the dogs dance? Yes, yes. Very good. <laughs> I did not, but I should go back and try. Uh, the, the, what I found with the dance and... Uh, so I'll go through the level first, I guess, my experience with the, with the first few levels. Because I, I did not finish this game. I didn't necessarily get stuck. I just kind of ran out of time. Uh, a lot going on this week, and I wasted a lot of time on other games like Cuphead. So I, the first level, 
the first time I went to it, I was using the magic Michael Jackson button to do everything. I, I was kind of like, yeah, this kick where I throw glitter is fine, but throwing my hat seems to do more damage and all these other things. When you use Michael Jackson's magic button, well, that sounds dirty, but when you use Michael Jackson's magic button, it takes away part of your life every time you use it. That, so, was, that was a note on the front door of uh, his ranch, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Hopefully we don't have a lot of those comments in this episode. No offense, man. To the light, Michael Jackson. I, I just meant it takes away part of your life on the screen when you use the magic button. And you get back parts of your magic as you save children. So if you are, you know, kind of using it a little bit and then you'll save five or six kids per levels early on. And the number of kids goes up as the levels go on. Uh, you can you can pretty much have a full life bar. The goal is to get to the boss fight with a full life bar. And then at least in the first few levels, when I got to the boss fight, I was just like, okay, cool, I'm at the boss fight. So I just held down my magic button long enough to make everybody dance. And that killed everybody on the first few levels. And so I thought, this is going to be real easy. If I can walk around and just throw glitter at people... Uh, as I fight them one-on-one, -on -one. and then I get to the boss fight, which isn't even really a boss. It's a bunch of guys that the boss calls in and walks away conveniently every round. This is going to be a super easy game, and it wasn't until the end of the first area. So the first area is a club, Club 30, according to the game itself. Uh, it's got three stages, um, and at the end of each stage is a, you know, a boss fight of that kind. The third stage of that level has the first time you fight what I would consider an actual, quote, boss, which is a, a, a character who's stronger than the average guy, not just a, a lot of them over and over again. And so well, the first time I got to him, I tried to make him dance, and he danced, but then he just got up and kept hitting me, and I had already hit myself because you danced down to like three-fourths of your life is gone. So that's when I was like, oh, now I have to actually learn how to play this game with some level of skill to beat some of these bosses. Yeah, to reiterate that, I mean, this can is a deceptively easy game um, when you are playing through through the stages. Uh, there's there are not a lot of standard enemies that are that are really going to present much of a challenge to you. Uh, and, and typically, I didn't see myself breaking the dance out until you know when when the boss calls in uh, all the all the guys. That's when you get the dance out. Otherwise, the the kick, uh, you know, the the jump and punch kind of thing. Whatever you want. To, the attacks on this game are very odd. Uh, the, the kick is the only thing I can see that really do any damage. A lot of it is just uh, Michael posing and, and glitter happens to shoot out of his hands and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, and I think if you if you hold down, not long enough for the dance, but you hold down the Michael Jackson magic button, as, as it's come to be known here, uh, you get a nice hat throw out of it. Uh, and if you time it right, you can throw the hat to one side, and as it comes back, you can whip it over to the other and kind of clear the screen out that way. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, deceptively easy early on as you're going through. Uh, but the bosses, yeah, you – and that was my experience first time playing it. I kind of got into this groove of just, you know, kick it a few times. If that doesn't do it, break the dance out, and it kills everything. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a surprise there when you bust the dance out on somebody and it – does nothing but just slows them a little bit and they just come right at you with a vengeance especially because it hurts you to do the the dance and the mm -hmm. super moves that like if if that didn't happen i mean it would be way too easy so that's fine but it's kind of a uh, an interesting dance of you know doing damage oh wait that wasn't supposed to be a pun i do apologize but it, you, you do a little yeah. bit of damage but then you make sure you you have a child to save or that you know this is the last fight for the level because you'll go into the next level with a full life bar um the, I, I forgot to mention, the children you're saving in the levels, uh, in the first level, they're kind of just laying on the floor, not so hard to find. But after that, they're all locked behind doors, or in later parts of the first level, they're even in parts of windows and things. When you get to the second area, uh, which is the streets, they're in like trunks of cars, and uh, they, basically all the children are hidden in doors in the level. But of course, much like in... Uh, Elevator action or Rolling Thunder or a game like that, but also has a lot of doors in it. Sometimes you open the door, you find a child. Other times you open the door, and there's a guy there waiting to fight you. So you've got to be kind of careful. You can't just open uh, a door without being ready to kick something in the face. And maybe it's a child, but thankfully you can't hurt them by you kicking them in the face, unlike real children. So I, I always made it, I got kind of into that habit. If it was something I could open, I'd open it, run to the side, turn around, and kick real quick, just in case it was a guy. Um, but they. The, each level you find all the children and then and this is the part where i kind of laughed i was like this game is almost like if someone made a parody of michael jackson because you save all the children and that's fine and then the last child like shoots off on a on a skateboard of some sort of like a rocket skateboard and then bubbles the chimp comes in 
and yeah. he jumps mm-hmm. on your back and he points to where you need to be in the level to go find Mr. Big. Like, why did he okay this? Why did, he, why did Michael Jackson <laughs> say, I need bubbles in this game as my magical guide? <laughs> I'm pretty sure he probably said that exact phrase. I mean, that was that is Michael Jackson. He, you know, it was known that he loved video games. Um, so, you know, it was probably what he just wanted to be a best of Michael Jackson. And, uh, you know, they had to run everything by him. You know, this is Michael Jackson. He's going to have it his way. So when they were just like, uh, they probably, you know, I can't imagine Sega being like, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this. And Michael was just like, put that fucking ape on my on my shoulders. I, I need him to show you where the boss is. And that's what he does. He'll point his little hand uh, in, in the direction of where the boss is in the stage. Because these, these are big stages uh, for the most part. The, you're running around all over the place, opening everything to try to find these kids. And by the time you find the last one, you may be in a completely opposite part of the stage uh, from where the boss is. So Bubbles is there to guide you. Uh, across the stage and he's not very good at it sometimes because sometimes he'll be pointing back and forth when he's actually meaning to point down got me a few times on that one it's a champ yeah well you know he can only do so much i'm sorry <laughs> to be fair I mean, to I, bubbles I mean, sorry it could have been macaulay culkin riding on his shoulder <laughs> so we got bubbles i think we got the better of the two uh, well you know i can't i can't fault it for that but uh, yeah he, he will show you where the boss is and then you get to the boss and Bubbles takes off and then that's the boss. It, it's a very strange uh, thing to just suddenly happen. I'll say that much. Well, and it seems unnecessary, at least in the early levels, because uh, a lot of the early levels are just kind of big flat planes with stairs that go to other flat planes. So you could fight that boss pretty much anywhere. Uh, I know some of the other levels you know, aren't that simple, but still, it seems like you could just have him come in at the end of, you know, when you find the last child, make sure all the children are in places where it won't be a problem. And then just have him come in and do his, you'll never catch me, ha, 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 and, and call people to come to, to fight Michael Jackson. Uh, the only thing I can see with that is, like, some of those bosses, like, require special parts of the stages, you know, for the, the people to come in and uh, for you to fight them. But even then, instead of bubbles, you could have just teleported. You know, the, the screen could have faded out and faded back in where the boss actually was. He could have moonwalked off the sta- off the screen and yes. like, moonwalked into the boss area. All those things We made worked. a better game just now. Well, I, I don't know, because I honestly think, e- even though I know that Bubbles is coming in at the end of every level, I laughed every time it happened, because it really <laughs> is the most ridiculous man. Like, it, it, it's, a, it's a weird mechanic, and it's something weird he, uh, he would have approved. Since it is Michael Jackson, the levels, as I mentioned earlier, are all just digitized versions of his hits, and actually sound really good. This is a Genesis game with, with actually really good sounding music. I didn't know we'd ever have one of those. say that this is the one thing the one instance of this game that something was better than i recalled it being i think i even made a comment to you guys early on that that one of the things i'd always wished was maybe this had been on a uh, system with slightly better sound but the genesis and this was an early genesis title and and this thing pushes it to the limits it's very well done uh, the songs it's very distinct what song you're listening to um uh, michael's various moans and 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 Victory cries are, are very well done. Yeah, this is just some, and I don't know if I've given this compliment out many times, aside from Mansion of Hidden Souls, uh, very good sound for a Genesis game. I think the people that, that you know, at, at Sega, or, you know, developers that, that knew how to work that sound chip, like, you could make some some awesome music with it. And if this was, like, Red Book audio or something, like, CD quality audio, I don't think it would be as memorable as the music that's in it. Cause I still, to this day, every time uh, that first stage music uh, starts up, 
Like, I'm just like, yep, that's it. That This is Moonwalker. That music is is Moonwalker, the game for me. Well, if it was just, you know, if it was CD quality and it was just his tracks behind it, it, it would just seem cheap. But somehow making it so that they're Sega's version of, you know, the first level is Smooth Criminal, and it sounds exactly like Smooth Criminal. It's excellent. It, it, it's, you know, it doesn't have, like, a, a vocal track over it or a fake instrumental vocal track. It's just the background, but it's the one you know. dun 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 But it's so good. Like, it sounds good. It wasn't a... A really cheap, sad 8-bit version of that. It was. It definitely used the, the Genesis music chip. Uh, one of the few games that did so very, very well. Sonic and that, pretty much. That's it. So you get through the first level. You fight your first real boss after you figure out how to really play the game. And you end up on the street for the next set of levels. Uh, where the combat definitely gets a little bit harder. The maps get a little bit larger. And that set of levels uses Beat It for the music. And that's another one. As soon as the level starts, like, man, this is great. I love these songs. I haven't heard these in forever. And the ones I have heard... Uh, it still sounds better in this version than if I just played it on the radio. I, I would actually just listen to this game and watch someone play it. I think it's that good. There's one really big complaint, though, um, with this game. It doesn't have Thriller. It, mm. it has it, clips of Thriller whenever yes. you make people do the dance, specifically the zombies that will play part of Thriller. But yes, yes. it doesn't play the entire mu- music. In fact, the third level, I didn't know what song it was. The other ones I knew... Uh, but the third level, I couldn't figure out what song it was. Apparently, it's a song called Another Part of Me, which I don't know. I'm just like, why wouldn't you use that song, though? I mean, it is the graveyard. It's zombies. It is literally perfect for that. But they didn't do it. it it's so weird to me. I, maybe they didn't have the rights to the full song or something. Maybe it was oh, only the songs from, like, Moonwalker. I don't know. That's all I can assume from it. It's some kind of rights issue because uh, it, was, it was the perfect setup. That is obviously, you know, where it belonged. Uh, but yeah, and that, that, that really takes you out of that level. Uh, but, but still music uh, is great. And, uh, yeah, second level when, when beat it comes on, you, you know, you're in for some shit then. Uh, and, and the second level is probably my favorite. Uh, you go through and in the first where you're checking behind doors, you're checking behind trunks now, um, or checking in trunks rather, uh, various parked cars, uh, fighting off, uh, enemies, fighting off dogs and fighting off fucking bombs that have such a short countdown on them, you can't possibly get away in time. <laughs> a lot of cheap, <laughs> cheap hits in this game. Well, yeah, the beat it music in it makes it work, though, because it feels like you're going to do some street fighting. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. It's perfect for that mm-hmm. level. Um, then, like, the third level, as, as uh, Jeremy already said, is it's called The Woods, but it's basically a graveyard, and it's filled with zombies, and, yeah, it doesn't use Thriller. And I, I don't know if it's... Going back to that comment, I don't think it's a rights issue because they definitely use clips of Thriller in that level when you make zombies dance, but... Maybe Michael Jackson just didn't want to use Thriller. Maybe he was sick of it at this point. It's like, no, I'm tired of Thriller. Don't Maybe. want to do it. Don't put it in the game. Like, well, what about when you dance with zombies? It's like, fine. When I dance with zombies, <laughs> I'll do it. But that's it. It's the only time I want to hear it. So he picked another song for that level. But uh, yeah, the, the third level is all zombies. Uh, end boss of that is like two zombies that rip in half and fly across the screen. That's the only boss that felt like a boss for another game uh, that was put in here as opposed to just a bunch of guys you can dance with. Uh, yeah. Levels... Uh, this, the fourth set of stages is in the caves, and that's with Billy Jean as the music. And I have to say, this fourth stage is where, is where the Genesis graphics-wise starts to let you down a little bit. Because it is just, it's a ugh, fucking brown background, and it's so muddy looking. And and I actually had myself a little bit, and there's a little bit more platforming to this one, including some pretty uh, jumps you have to be a little accurate with. And fuck it. I had a time here and there on this level with that. Well, this was definitely... Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I, I would say um, the first three levels, by the time I got done with the third level, um, Moonwalker has, has said what it needs to say. Um, everything after that, I, I just, I don't know. It, it's just more of the same. And like Billy was saying, it's it, that cavern stage is just super brown. Um, there's just a lot of going up and down, kicking rocks all over the place. Uh, it's... I, I, it starts to get a, a little bit too mazy for me at that point. Uh, the graveyard started doing that anyway. Uh, but then after that, um, there's uh, there's more all over the place kind of finding your way around. And uh, that can get to the point where when Bubbles does show up, I couldn't find the boss. Sometimes. I remember back when I was a kid trying to do that, I could not find the boss. He just wasn't – Bubbles was not showing me where I need to go because the stage was so big. So – uh, I, I think after the third stage, the, the game kind of takes, a, it kind of goes downhill for me. 
Well, the levels get too big, and you're right. They, they become a lot more like a maze. I did not finish the fourth level. Uh, I did watch a Let's Play of the rest because I didn't want to be completely blindsided by how it ends. But uh, th- that caves level was where I was like, if I had more time, I could get through this, but I don't have the time to, to finish this up because it did feel like I needed to actually start writing some things down. All the caves kind of look the same, um, and, and it was a lot of... Very confusing at first. Maybe it wasn't that confusing once I mapped it out, but I had I had not really mapped it out enough to get what I was supposed to be doing uh, to get through that level there other than finding kids in caves. Uh, so after those sets of levels, you go to the enemy hideout uh, of Mr. Ba- Mr. Big. And it looks like he lives in some sort of space sci-fi level with a green militia. Yeah, uh, just yeah. like the movie. <laughs> but, and, and that could be. Again, I have not seen it. Perhaps that's the part of the movie I'd need to see. Uh, and, and that's another one where you figure, okay, now it's at the... I know there's five levels because the game has said that in the manual. So this is where I'm going to finally get to fight Mr. Big at the end. Uh, but no, nope, you get to the end of the third stage and Mr. Big again calls his army of green guys. But that's when the game takes <laughs> quite a turn. <laughs> uh, the, the, the enemies, the green guys start pouring out and, and fucking the odds seem insurmountable. But that is when that's when you get hit, you get hit by a fucking meteor and you turn into a goddamn Michael Jackson robot. <laughs> I hope that happens in the movie. It does. Perfect. Yes. It does. <laughs> that's perfect. That now I need to see this movie. But that's yes, it, it hits you. You become a robot that's like four times the size of regular Michael Jackson. I don't know if you're invincible. The 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 video I watched of the end of it looks like he wasn't getting hurt yeah. at all. The lasers can uh, can damage you, uh, but the, they they fire so few of those. Any melee attacks though uh, are, are all for naught, and you just you just fire your lasers away and you clear them out. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Uh, <laughs> it's something to see. If nothing else, just to because I did not expect it, <laughs> and I was just like, "Whoa, what is this?" And then after you finish off all those guys, you become space uh, or robot Michael Jackson. Then. For again, the movie must explain this. Then you go into like a spaceship battle, where it's a it becomes a completely different game altogether. For the very end of the game, where you fight Mr. Big in space against an army of his spaceships. I don't think that actually happened in the movie, did it, Billy? I, I don't remember. I don't think they had the budget for that. No, that, but that did that does happen at the. Uh, so this is basically the extended version of the movie uh, for Moonwalker on Genesis. Mm-hmm. It looked like, and again, I didn't play this one, so I just had to watch the end of that that level. I didn't play that far in the game, but it looked like it was chaos. It looked like, and the let's play, they were just like basically spinning the controller around and firing as much as they could, and eventually they shot enough ships in Mr. Big, and it ended. But was that does that part as bad as it looked to be? The spaceship, it's tough. Um, and I uh, I went back and watched a let's play after I finished this thing to see if I if anybody had any. Uh, you know, shortcuts, anything like that, any alternate technique that I did not take part in in this game. I usually try to go through and watch someone else play it also. Uh, and yeah, any difficulty you saw someone having is because this thing controls like just like shit right there at the end. Uh, it's rough on that Genesis controller, which I've always had a problem with, and especially I think it was mine, which I wore out to the point where the D-pad was not uh, the most dependable. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a little tougher to control. It's a little tougher to aim, and you're given a little radar screen of sorts uh, that that may as well just not be there. Uh, it, it's fairly worthless, also. It's like the the worst space combat game ever, kind of put at the very end of of this game. It's uh, it comes out of nowhere. I mean, it's kind of neat that it's in there just to take this complete 180 and and go way the hell away from this other game you've been playing 90 percent of the way. Um, for this space combat. So it, the uh, the shock level is there, and I think that, that helps with it, uh, but it is not fun to play. It is it's just very much just a bunch of chaos going on and, and hope for the best. Uh, it's what it's definitely the kind of thing that if, if I would have gotten that far and then lost at that point over and over again, I would have just lost my mind because it is such a different thing than the rest of the game would be. It just seems like, especially if the movie doesn't have it. Like, I figured that's that's what happened in the movie then. But if the movie's not there, that's even worse. That means they they were just like, Michael Jackson was just said, you know what I want to do? I want to fly a spaceship. And they were kind of like, sure, let's throw it yeah, in here I, at the I, end. That's about what I can make, because I, I cannot remember. I don't think that was actually in the movie. I think in the movie, he turns into a four-story tall robot Michael Jackson, blows everyone up, saves the kids, we're good to go. Um he does, I believe. I believe he turns into a jet to to save the ki- or take the kids away. Uh, I think so. 
but he does not actually engage in a space battle with Mr. Big. I don't think Mr. Big had those uh, had that kind of money to have an entire space armada. You know what this means? We're just going to have to have a uh, another episode where we would just review the Moonwalker film. Oh my uh, God! You clearly, could do it. I, it's just clearly so... that's the direction we're heading in. Watch it live and talk about it while we do. That's something that no one that listens to the podcast wants to hear, but we may do it anyway. Uh, yes, for Halloween, uh, that, could, that could be quite, <laughs> quite the treat. The scariest episode ever. And, and play play the game as well. I think that's I mean, a... both, both are excellent for what they are. Uh, the Moonwalker movie is not fine cinema, uh, but if you like Michael Jackson's music videos and you wanted to watch one that went on for about an hour, 20 minutes or so, uh, this is the one for you. Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of Joe Pesci with funny hair, also a movie for you. But this game, uh, the critique of the film aside, this game is is not bad. The first few levels, they really nail it. Uh, I miss Thriller not being in there for the duration of the level. Uh, but after that, after the fourth level or so, they start to make the levels just too big for this game. Uh, they kind of muddy up the screen a little bit to where it's harder to navigate. And a lot of the fun, uh, unfortunately, when you get partway through this game, a lot of the fun kind of kind of dips down for you. And yeah, that last level, uh, the the space fight um is is very disorienting uh, there's no lead up to it this isn't something you do at one point in the game so when you get there it's like oh this is what i do um yeah uh, it's a great game it's to be 1990 uh to be uh, you know kind of an earlier genesis game it, it looks great sounds amazing uh controls good until you know a little bit later on and yeah I mean, I, I can't recommend this enough. And on a side note, uh, when Michael transforms into the robot, you're given a, uh, a transformation screen of his face. And as a kid, I had to close my eyes during yes. that because it, it reminded me of Superman 3. Yes. Uh, Lady yes. turns into the robot, which between that and Zelda from Pet Cemetery were the two things that plagued me as a child. That and Mac tonight. Mac, <laughs> Mac tonight. Mac tonight didn't scare me as much as he just concerned me. <laughs> Large Marge also from a uh, oh, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, but that got me uh, because uh, it, it just made me think of Superman three, which w- was unpleasant. Was not a good time to be a kid during that. Uh, now, but yeah, we, we said before, like it, you can turn into the robot in other stages, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I remember doing that. As, as a kid. I surely, I, cannot recall the what you need to do uh my playthrough this past time i didn't uh, until the end i can't recall what situation needs to be uh or what requirements need to be met for it to happen but yeah you i think as early on as the caverns i think uh i remember being in the caverns and as the robot so yeah this is not the uh not the first time in the game it can happen well, in the manual, all it says is see if you can find out how to turn Michael Jackson into a robot. So I just assumed after seeing the end of it that that's what they meant. They were just hinting that at the end of the game you turn into a robot. But I guess if you can do it another level, that's kind of cool. I guess for me, like I, I really like the game, but man, I just wish it was that arcade game. I had so much fun playing that damn arcade game. Like that was just that would have been perfect with two players. You can't play two players in this one, right? No, you uh, can't, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh yeah the, the arcade version was was just it was great i i have so many good memories of playing that at the laundromat uh and i was kind of really disappointed when i got my genesis and didn't even look at the ba- back of the box for moonwalker i just took it got it home and i was like this isn't what i was playing what are you doing sega this is a completely different game um but i i did end up playing it and i i, I do do enjoy it. it it doesn't stay as enjoyable 
throughout the entire game, like we said. Uh, but the music alone carries that game so far. If, if there's one game out there where you can be like, the music makes this game, I, I think Moonwalker uh, for the Genesis could be in that top five. And if there's ever a, an episode that we have to pull because of legal reasons, it will be this one for all the music yeah, we're going to use for I can't, Michael Jackson. Can't wait to get all the, the copyright claims when I put this one up on YouTube. But uh, yeah, I, I, as someone who had not played it before more than for a couple seconds in a store, I, I actually really like it. It's different than most other games I've played. It is animated very well. I think it still is very playable. But yeah, the later levels get to be a little too much work for the kind of game that it is. And, and you do kind of do everything you need to do. See everything you need to see in the first few levels, especially once you get to the zombie levels of Michael Jackson Dance with the Zombies. That really is probably the pinnacle of the game. And it kind of yeah. goes downhill from there. Robot Michael aside, uh, the rest of the game is, is kind of just more of the same what you did before without cool zombie dancing. So uh, I, I still think it's worth playing. And, and yeah, for an early Genesis title, I think it's held up pretty well. So it's the beginning of October, and we didn't want to do three solid Halloween... Si- but up, try that again. It's the beginning of October, and so the next few episodes are going to definitely be horror-related, or at least horror movie-related. So for the next episode, we're going to play Attack of the Killer Tomatoes for the Nintendo, based on the movie of the same name. I don't know if either of you have seen the movie, uh, or if you should. I have seen it, and I still don't know if I should say you you should see them or not, but I've never played the game. So I'm looking forward to that, a, a horror or at least horror movie-themed game I have not played before. I have not seen the movie, so uh, this will actually... I remember watching the cartoon as a kid, though, on Saturday morning, mm. and uh, I, I never actually knew that there was an NES game for it, so I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to playing it, even though I'm pretty sure it's awful. I didn't... I forgot yeah. about the cartoon. I totally forgot about the cartoon, but I bet that's what the game is based on. But that's okay. We'll find out in two weeks. Uh, but since uh, this episode is airing this after this past weekend, the Super NES Classic was released. And despite that we've talked about it several times, and, and I think as of last episode, both Jeremy and I said we didn't care and we weren't going to hunt it hunt down for one, uh, I definitely tried. I went to two different stores. Uh, I went to the Target by my house and did not wait outside and therefore did not get one. I got there at, at 7.30. They opened at 8. There was probably 20 people in line, and I thought, no, I waited at this Target for the, the NES Classic, and they only got five units, so I'm not going to wait in this line, especially because I had two kids, and I probably should have been getting them ready for school. So I just drove home and then came back at 9, and they were already gone. But they said they did get about 80 units, which means I could have gotten one had I stood there, but I didn't. And then I was told uh, that Best Buys had them if you went in and asked, uh, but they did not at me at the one by my house, uh, even though they did the one that was an hour from my house because a friend picked one up. So I did not get one, even though I said I wasn't going to look for them. I did go out and hunt for them. Did either of you find a Super NES Classic? I checked one store. I was not going to hunt this time. Uh, I checked one, and they didn't have it. Uh, And most places, uh, after I talked to some friends over the course of the day, some friends that really fucking hit the pavement looking for this thing, uh, most places were sold out immediately. Uh, Most Walmarts were sold out by, you know, 1230 that that morning. Uh, Most other stores, yeah, they got, you know, 15 to 20 in and not enough to cover all the people waiting in line. Um, but I know people that got them this time. So I don't, I don't know if that's promising or not. Uh, then I know a person or two that was able to get their hands on one. Um, but you had to strike early that morning. Uh, but but the, I guess the promising thing is um, most of them told me these stores, they talked, they, that they went to, uh, the employees said, and the same with the, the Target I went to, that they, they do plan – uh, to be getting a pretty good stock of them in. Uh, they're going to have them delivered you know, pretty frequently. Uh, they couldn't tell me when. They said probably within this month they would be getting more in, and they seem to think they'll be getting a, a steady flow of them. So uh, I'm, once again, not getting my hopes up by far. I went through that with the, the NES Classic. But it's looking at least slightly more promising that maybe this is something that, that's feasible to get a hold of. Yeah, I went out and um, I, I went out around ten, I think, and got an oil change. And I wasn't actually going to stop anywhere, but then I kind of saw I, I was looking at uh, some forums, and they were saying like a lot of the stores were getting, uh, you know, a few dozen of these things uh, or more. And um, there were definitely reports of people just kind of walking in and and having them sitting there. 
uh, after the lines had already got all their points. So I was like, well, you know, I'll stop. There was like three places on my way home. So first place I stopped was Meyer. Of course, it's Meyer. They never have a goddamn, they never have anything ever. So I wasn't too surprised. I uh, didn't even ask because it's not worth it. Um, next place was a Walmart. Went into the Walmart, asked them. Uh, they said they had gotten around 20 and, and they were gone, of course, the, the previous night when they when they stocked them. So that was gone. But then uh, Best Buy was there and Best Buy actually showed online that they had several in stock. Um, but I wasn't going to put too much uh, hope into that because when the people were standing outside Best Buy, they were just get, giving out numbers and they had until one o'clock to come and pick it up. So those systems, I believe, are still showing as in stock. But I, I stopped anyway, went back to the back. I uh, didn't see anything. Uh, saw this, uh, this employee and asked her uh, if she had, if they had any, and she just gave me the worst look. And so she just kind of looked at me and, uh, and and was just like, you know, if you wanted one of those, you really needed to get here in line because you know how it went with the NES and and this and this. And I was like, I'm getting a fucking lecture from a Best Buy employee about not coming here, at you know, whenever the fuck they open up. I don't know. I, I don't want to stand outside for this shit. Uh, it, it should be on the shelf anyway. Nintendo should be able to make enough stock. It should be here. And I'm hoping that I can just find one in the future. You know, if they do have more stock than what the NES Classic was, that I can just get one. But I was not about to just sit out there and, and camp for one like those other people. It's just not worth it. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that I can get one, but I, I don't know. I don't have my hopes up. I will get one if I see it. Like if I find it, if I go to a Target, I keep saying Target because I pretty much go there on a, every other day basis to get something I realize I'm not out of. So, and it's right across the street from my house. So I'm sure I'll see it there at some point. I'll grab it. And, you know, again, for the convenience of the thing and the price for $80 for 21, you know, solid games, including a handful that are definite needs. I, I will eventually, eventually grab it if I see it. But uh, yeah, I'm not getting my hopes up, uh, but at least I do want it. Unlike the, uh, there's some more news on that Atari box or whatever it's called. Oh, oh man, guys. <laughs> Are you, are you ready for your, your uh, monthly Atari box news? Mm. I'm on the uh, this edge is, of my seat. <laughs> have, they, have, a... they, have they scammed all the people that have funded it yet? Or is uh, that, am, well, I, is this, am I predicting it way far ahead of time? Uh, we're still coming out with actual news about okay. it. Uh, it's not a real thing yet, and who knows if it ever will be a real thing. But Atari uh, keeps thinking that it will be. Now, last time we spoke of this, they just announced it, and it was just like, here's the thing. And we'll get back to you later. They kind of showed some renders of it. Uh, one of them looked actually pretty cool. It was made out of wood. Um, so, you know, it, it looks pretty neat. And so we were all kind of speculating that it was going to be this uh, kind of like a Ouya 2.0, you know, streaming box with some Android games or something with maybe some Atari 5200 games uh, packed in, maybe some Jaguar games. Who fucking knows? <laughs> but um that that highly vaunted uh, Atari Jaguar uh, oh. library, but uh, so they came out uh, a few days ago and had some more news about this. Um, they it seems like it's going to actually kind of compete with the Apple TV and and uh, you know uh, Roku and things like that. It's going to have streaming apps. It's going to have social apps like Facebook, Twitter, uh, and uh, along with the Atari games and things like that. Okay, so. We've established that it's going to be some kind of ghetto Atari set-top box, or, you know, for something that for streaming or whatever. Now, how much, knowing that, how even if this came with the entire Atari 2600 library, Atari 5200 library, the entire Atari Jaguar library from Atari, and even some of their old PC games with what some about, streaming apps, how much link? would you, how much would you pay for this? Are the Lynx games included? I fuck yeah. Who, who cares? I was yeah, going to ask the same how question. Much I, how much would I pay, or how much do I think they're going to charge? How much would you pay for that? <sighs> fuck, not a lot. Uh, how much is an Apple TV? Uh, the newest one just came out. It's around a hundred and I think sixty, hundred seventy bucks. Okay. I so... mean, I wouldn't go much more than fucking personally. I mean, it, anything over a hundred is crazy. Yeah, I mean, I guess if, if it does everything the Apple TV does, you have to use that as a baseline price for what they expect people to pay. Again, I, I don't need those things. Everything an Apple TV does, you can do with a PS4 or whatever else, and I already have those things. Now, if I didn't, great. An Apple TV is a nice option, but uh, as someone who has a semi-modern console, it, 
it, it's not necessary. But yeah, let's and, and and times have, have proven that fucking the best thing to look at social media on is a damn phone. Uh, it's a pain on a fucking console. Um, so I, I still don't know why advertising that you can stream stream things that you can access fucking social media on on a device is still a a feature. It's like when you go to a hotel that says they have fucking cable. Uh, <laughs> who gives a shit at this point? You you should. You ought to have it. Every uh, room has its own bathroom. Here's a <laughs> here's a fucking car with air condition. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it, some, it, I've been in some without, but that was not the way they came. Atari <laughs> thinks uh, thinks otherwise. Uh, they I, they think that they've they've got hot shit right here, and they are going to release this thing, according to Atari, between two hundred and fifty dollars and two hundred and ninety nine dollars, but well, definitely I, below three hundred dollars. <laughs> You say that they've got hot shit. You're half correct. <laughs> you can remove one of those words. I'll let you take a guess as to which. And so all I can think of is Atari has just completely lost their minds. Uh, at that price point, they are officially uh, competing with the PS4 uh, and Xbox One. Whenever this comes out, it, it might actually be more expensive than the Xbox One and the, and the PS4. Um, are they, the base models. Surely the same level of drugs that got passed around Atari in the 80s are, are back in the office now. I It seems like it, because like when you're sitting there and going to tell me that you're going to give me this console uh, as, as sort of $300 in Atari box, backed you, by Atari, I mean, no. What the fuck? Even, uh, that, it's ridiculous. Uh, and the fact that that's the price, that that is so close to the amount needed to to just go out and buy uh i mean just wait one more paycheck and then just go buy you know one of the 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 major consoles right now um if you're a fucking kid just let that allowance hit another month or two um shit i mean that's ridiculous but this isn't targeting kids no kid is excited about an atari box i can tell you this adult hitting either i can't i can't (laughs) i can't imagine that the the I'd like to think that the target audience for this, which obviously is us, um, and and maybe you know people with a, a few years on us, I'd like to think that 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 age range is is God, hopefully too fucking savvy, or, or at least knows that the Atari has has crashed and burned now uh, so many times that that this thing is not gonna not gonna take off. That has to be my hope. Um, but who the fuck knows? I mean, that's why I was like, you know, if if you put every single game from the Atari's library on this thing, already preloaded, that you don't have to buy, it's still not worth that that price. No. no and you know, Atari's only going to put a small handful, and you know, they're going to have their own little virtual console for you to buy other class classic quote uh, Atari games, um, and and that just it. it if there is an audience out there for that, I want to beat those people because they they would just I would just want to listen to them talk about something <laughs> and just tell me why. Try to explain to me why this sounds like a great idea because this just sounds like a dumpster fire. You know what I'm looking for? I'm looking forward to the first video they put out that has one of their one of their spokesmen or somebody giving an impassioned rundown and speech about this thing and a rundown of it. I want to hear someone. I want to hear an actual person try to sell this thing. Well, I don't think we're actually going to see this thing get made. I'm I'm still excited about the news for it because it's interesting, but there's no chance this thing makes it to market, especially at that price point. That is, uh, that is ridiculous. Again, even if it did come with every game for all those systems, it's not worth 300 bucks because you can just buy a PS4 or an Xbox One, and they have the Atari collections to give you the ones you want to play anyway. I mean, no one's hunting this down to play, you know third-party Atari games that, did, that weren't Activision. No one's excited about the Halloween game. I mean, it's not going to happen. That's the thing. They've put their games out uh, via collections for, for just about every console for a long time now. Chances are, if you loved an Atari game enough, uh, you you would have picked it up for one of these. Um, yeah, so I, I can't see it. I can't. And, and I joked about them stealing everyone's money. But is this a crowd... Is this going to be a crowdfunded thing? Or are they... Surely they fucking... I don't know. Did everybody reach under their couch to work for Atari and scrounge up the uh, fucking part of it? Part of it is a, a crowdfunding effort, I believe. All right, so they are going to rip everybody off. 
So next time, we're going to not talk about an Atari game. We're going to talk about an NES game based on what is most likely the cartoon based on a movie called Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. But until then, please check us out on Retrovania.net, on Facebook at Retrovania.net, on Twitter at Retrovania.net. We have videos that come up pretty much in between each of these podcast episodes uh, that are probably better than the podcast. So please check them out, and we will see you next time.